order. Everyone, please stand and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Ashley, can I have roll call, please? Lennard? Here. Melby? Here. Gertie? Here. Fisher? Here. Briggs? Here. Cavalier? Here. Kressel? Here. Flat? Here. Okay, it's time for the open forum. If anyone would like to address council on any issue not already on tonight's agenda, may come to the podium. State your first and last name and address, please. My, hi, my name is Pat Thomas, and I live at 407 Houston. Every year in March, I get irate. We have hockey tournaments, high school, basketball, boys basketball, hockey tournaments, and I, we have them stuck with Midco. And you have to hunt to find which channel they're carried on. And finally this year, I found 595, and it's crappy service, and you only get to watch Friday and Saturday night. But when North Dakota comes, I mean, that's on Channel 8, and you watch Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I mean, they get primetime coverage. So I called over there, and I said, you know, I'm paying you $235 a month for service. How come we can't have the same service that North Dakota gets? And they said, well, you'll have to take, uh, take that up with somebody at, higher up. And, uh, so I, I don't know, I can go out here and get my oil changed at Christian Motors, and they don't have Midco, they got Halstead. And then you get Minnesota news, you find out what's happening in St. Paul. I could care less what goes on in Bismarck. So I wish there'd be some option that we, could, we would have, living in town, that you could, outside of uh, DISH TV, because we've had that in the past, but every time a lightnings, you lose coverage, so. I don't know if Midco has this town wrapped up, but I wish we had an option because for what I'm paying, uh, I would like, all I ask is to watch the high school hockey and basketball tournaments. Thank you for Thank your you. time. Anyone else? Hearing none from the chambers, or council chambers, anybody on the phone bridge chat? None tonight, Your Honor. I will close the bridge. Thank you. Agents logged off. Okay, no presentations. This brings to us to the agenda. Does anyone wish to add or remove anything from tonight's agenda? Do I have a motion to approve tonight's agenda? So moved, Your Honor. Thank you, Tim. Second? I'll second it. Second by Delane. Thank you. Clayton. No, Clayton. 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 Sorry. Yep. Yeah. Uh, roll call, please. Menard? Aye. Melby? Aye. Jurdy? Aye. Fisher? Aye. Briggs? Aye. Cavalier? Aye. Kressel? Aye. Clatt? Aye. Okay, this brings us to the consent agenda. Does anyone wish to remove anything from the consent agenda? I have a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda. So, so move, Your Honor. Thank you. Don, is there a second? Second. Second by Joe. Thank you. Roll call, please. Menard? Aye. Melby? Aye. Jurdy? Aye. Fisher? Aye. Briggs? Aye. Cavalier? Aye. Kressel? Aye. Clatt? Aye. Okay, this brings us to public hearings. Ashley. Yes, Your Honor. Item 7.01 is a public hearing on project number 1000, Houston Avenue, Hunter Street to South Ash Street. It's a local project by Street Reconstruction. This project has an estimated cost of $658,112 with an amount to be assessed of $197,434, Your Honor. Thank you. I'll open this public hearing. Does anyone wish to address council? Please come to the podium. State your first and last name and address, please. Uh, Jake P, 308 Houston Avenue. And so we did get the proposed uh, assessment uh, uh, to our address here. And I know I've been watching a lot of this uh, ever since this has kind of uh, been brought up about uh, maybe possibly tripling uh, the fees to be assessed or whatever. Um, I respect that you guys are looking at the balance to see how that budgets it out, but my main question really goes to not maybe fall in on how the street assessment works. You guys are worried about the budget, 
but you're not looking at uh, the special benefit to these properties. Uh, just for our sake, uh, we have a, a proposed assessment of $39,298.04. And I'm just wondering what equation the, the council or the city has gone about it to show that there is a special benefit to our property of almost $40,000. Have we reached out to a licensed appraiser at all? Have we done a market out analyst to come up with these numbers? You know, when the assessment rate is lower and reasonable at 40, you know, you probably have an argument there that it still doesn't reach a special benefit to the property, but I think most people can accept it. But when you guys are talking about tripling that up to where some people are gonna start seeing five, 10, 15,000, 40, some thousand dollars, I mean, there isn't anybody that can really look you in a straight face and say, yeah, now you can sell your home after we shine up your road a little bit for $40,000 more. Um, so I guess I'm just trying to figure out, you know, the, you know, there's gonna be an appeal process, obviously, if you guys go forward with this. And without any market analysts or uh, talking with a licensed appraisal, it's gonna get thrown out in district court right away. So then what happens? Are you guys gonna be still going forward with the project on Houston is it's you know I talked with four licensed appraisers uh, three real estate people and a lawyer that specializes in special assessments and not, none of them really can say either it's no special benefit or very limited special benefit to our property so and that is you're correct that is the process and if this uh, counts on tonight is it open hearing to discuss this if the uh, council moves ahead with this process then certainly it is your right to appeal. Get your appraisers and go to district court. I don't necessarily agree that it would be thrown out in district court, but that's where you have the opportunity to do that. Yeah, but do we have any, has the city done any due diligence at all to put in the thought process of special benefit to these affected properties? That's what comes up in district court, Jake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's your right to challenge that. Yeah, but at this I, point, the council has not moved to do anything. We're listening to your suggestions, as others, right. and we will then, hopefully tonight, approve the plans and specs. Those will be sent out for bids, and we'll see what the bids come in, and then the council at that time will make a decision. One, will they go through with all the projects? None of the projects, some, yes. And we'll establish a special assessment rate at that time. Correct, and I guess then the uh, fair warning then would be that, you know, by going up, tripling up the assessment fees is just gonna tie up litigation for the city. Um, most of them, we, we can disagree, Corky, but you're not gonna find an appraiser that's gonna say a piece of property goes up $40,000 by a road that's not in that bad of shape in the first place. So well, our curbs suck, but you know, after that, the road's really not in that bad of shape. So, I mean, we, <laughs> You can move forward with it. I'm just saying, oh, that then it's just going to tie up more litigation going forward. And I really just don't think uh, it would be a wise decision to do that. I, we know things are going up. Uh, I think most people, even though there might not be a special benefit, is still willing to pay uh, beyond that. I just think that uh, when you go such an extreme, that people are going to be forced to have to appeal to district court. And I think most of them will be overturned because there just will be a lack of evidence on city. Uh, sake so and and that's certainly your opinion and that's one of the things the council's here to, to listen to tonight okay. if this is the preliminary matter yeah. okay and I hear you Corky okay. I'm just trying to state my point and what you know how the special assessment process works because a lot of people don't you know so so I guess that's what I'm saying I would be very cautious on uh, going to these extremes because they're gonna be exceeding all special benefits to these affected property owners so that's what I got Thank you. Anyone else? Hi, my name is Robert Gustafson. I live at 341 Houston Avenue. And I did have a chance to look at the plans uh, prepared by Widseth. Is anybody in here from Widseth? Okay. Uh, yeah, absolutely, great. Um, I was excited to see the plan, you know, that there's some improvements that are gonna be in Houston, or the Woods Edition. Uh, what surprised me a little bit was that uh, 
you know, it's, it's under a, a thousand linear feet and that, uh, you know, the neighborhood impacts are, I think, kind of minimized, you know, for improvements. It's uh, a thousand feet of roadway improvement and I just feel like there, there could be improvements that would benefit more of the neighborhood um, rather than just that specific area. Um, looking at the plans, I thought there were some questionable things I'd like to, the engineers to consider. Um, I noticed that they had removed the sidewalk on the south side of Houston Avenue from station four to station, we'll say 10. And he had, he had mentioned that's something we could talk about at this meeting. Uh, how, do, how do you feel about removing an existing sidewalk and, ha and you know, then having that replaced with, you know, sod, you know, resurfaced with sod and grass? How is that going to affect the neighborhood on that side of the road? And I started looking at it and I was like, you know, it's not cheap to remove 900 linear feet of concrete. There's a cost with that. Um, so I'd look at preserving the existing sidewalks. And along 308, I believe, how many linear feet of, of concrete do you have there? Yeah, he's got 400 feet of concrete there. And so I'm looking at this project, and as a landscape architect, what I do is I look at projects and I say, how do I minimize the infrastructure costs, and how do I maximize the recreational opportunities? Well, I'm looking at this the same way. How do we minimize infrastructure costs but still get some uh, benefits in the, addition, the woods addition? So just quickly looking at this, I would recommend that we keep the existing sidewalks, that the roadway from Station 4 to Station 10 that it's proposed to be go from 34 feet to 32 feet. I suggest to make it even smaller, go to 28 linear feet. You can still get your emergency vehicles and two cars parked by the side. The other thing to minimize infrastructure costs and to look at construction and, and say the type of curb that you put in there. I was maybe thinking about a mountable curb. It is a curved section of the road there. It gets a lot of damage from snow removal. You know, the existing curb there has probably been I don't know how long it's been there. Someone probably knows more about it than me. It's old, but I'd like to see you know new curb put in place, but something that's not going to be damaged there. Uh, just so, just looking at those things like right now and looking at the six hundred and fifty-eight thousand dollars improvement for about less than forty homes that have to uh, be assessed these costs is how can I minimize that? So I'd like to see the neighborhood improved, and I don't think you improve it by taking away the sidewalks. Um, you leave those there. Um, the idea that the road could be 28 feet is possible. There's a cost savings there, four feet, you know. Um, and I'm looking at this, and I'm also concerned about it's just the water main. I don't know about the sewer getting replaced, but I know whenever you have a construction going on and you're trenching and there's existing infrastructure, there's concern about the, the other infrastructure that's there and that getting damaged from compaction or just being unsettled around there. So we've got the sewer and we've got a water main there. And I'm just concerned that after construction, we might have problems with our, our sewer lines because of the equipment and it being disturbed. Um, other things looking at costs, you know, new sidewalks aren't cheap. Uh, construction costs have gone up how much, you know, in the last two years? I was looking at uh, water mains, a uh, six inch water main in 2013, 10 years ago was $30 a linear foot, perhaps $50 a linear foot. Today you're looking at costs of over $100 a linear foot for an existing water main to be installed. Your fire hydrants, they used to be $5,000 to be installed. They're now about $10,000 to be installed. Mm. Now, construction costs are so high, I think we need to approach this with uh, looking at improvements on a smaller scale that are gonna have more impact. You know, making this money available for the, for the neighborhood to have ADA accessible curbs, perhaps patching our roads, and as our water lines break, we fix them. You know, I mean, the idea that we rip up a whole section for one block and, and charge them a lot on the assessment to me is unrealistic, it's not sustainable. So improve the neighborhood, ADA curbs, um, make impacts where you can, um, and minimize the, the hurt that a few homeowners have to deal with in, in assessments. That's all I have. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, Kevin, this isn't your... Oh, we're not there quite yet. No. no. <laughs> we're on uh, Houston, I thought we were getting close. Okay. <laughs> Take that roadway back. <laughs> Hi, I'm Cindy Ansbacher, and I live on 323 Houston. And um, I've been aware of the roads for a long time. Yes, my curbs are crumbling apart, and it's um, been for a long time. Uh, I love where I live. 
I like the, my neighbors, I love my community, and I love the idea um, my neighbor offered that we consider you know, enlivening our community if funds become available with different things. Um, I know the last meeting I was at, they said it would be like an $8.5 million project. And um, I don't know if it was resolved yet, but I also understand that, was it, um, yeah, not, not Corky, the other one, uh, said that we really couldn't um, even consider using, you know, uh, charging that money until the, the houses at the end of Houston were removed and the, the river flow abated and the erosion abated. Um, I don't know if that's still the where you guys sit. I, that was just from the last meeting. And maybe you've been able to work out some of those issues. Um, if, if that is still where it is, I would consider um, before we invest all that money, making sure that uh, the river and the erosion happening there uh, is put in check. So that when we move forward with our projects, we don't have that sneaking up behind us. Like I said, I love <coughs> Houston. Yes, my curves are crumbling. But then my heart goes out to the idea of what else could we do with this money? And um, is it is I, I like what my neighbors have offered because they have the expertise and the skill, uh, the knowledge about how to move forward um, with projects, land use and um, effective property taxes on the neighbors. Mine was a bit of a shock, not really, but it was, because um, my house is worth 41,000 and my property taxes are now 1,000. And so when you compare that to the value of the home, you know, like what? So, um, but I'm so happy I made it to this meeting and I'll let you guys carry forward. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll close this public hearing. Moving on. Item 7.02 is a public hearing on project number 1001, Alexander Street, 4th Avenue to 1200 Alexander Street. It's a local project by street reconstruction. This project has an estimated cost of $408,139.05, with an amount to be assessed of $122,442, Your Honor. Thank you. Open this public hearing. Does anyone wish to address counsel? If so, please come to the podium, state your first and last name and address, please. Uh, Chris Pont, 1114 Alexander Street. Um, I'm just curious as to the funding formula that's used in this reconstruction project and what the project all includes. Is it sidewalk, uh, curb gutters? I mean, it's, the notice sent out was pretty vague. Um, it doesn't really say a lot what's included. And then, in that price, you know, if the sidewalk's included, you go on the tax statement, and we have a little fine writing down here with the sidewalk fee. Are we getting double billed for this? Or how, how is that working? The sidewalk fund. That's all I got. Thank you. So in the funding for these projects, Chris, the, the, the city brings in 68-ish thousand a year for uh, sidewalk improvements, and it's, it's getting equally distributed throughout these projects. So um, it's an Alexander. We were going to put sidewalk in on the east side of Alexander, and I believe you're on the east side, right? Yeah. But the sidewalk is equally distributed through the whole project. It's not just the properties on the east side of the road. So we're using, you know, there's, there's, we're asking you guys to come up with 30% of the project, and the other 70% is, uh, is either LGA. Uh, 68,000 of it is the sidewalk improvements. Um, a large portion is coming out of the uh, water fund because Alexander was uh, dug up because the water main was replaced. Same with Houston Avenue. Um, just a touch on the sanitary sewer back on Houston Avenue. We had it camera and there is a portion 
that is not in the best shape on the east end, so we will be getting that relined before the road is, is replaced. Um, and then all the water and water main and water uh, services will be uh, will be replaced before the road's done. So, and all the all the storm catches, I believe, on Houston are getting redone, right, Rich? So, most of that infrastructure on uh, Houston, other than a little bit of sanitary that was inspected and shown to be good, is is going to be replaced. So. <laughs> and if you wanted more of a detailed list too as well that's going to happen on your project, I'd be happy to email you the preliminary engineer's report. So you can. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, Your Honor, I think it's kind of interesting. <clears throat> Both projects, people have talked about them. They're worried about the sidewalk. We went through here years ago and made a sidewalk policy and the first time we tried to implement it, it got poo-pooed. And now people are coming and saying they want sidewalks. And I said, I'm not gonna talk about them again until they come in and say they want them. So I think on these projects, we better take heed of what the property owners want as far as an end result on there um, for the sidewalk. Just a thought. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> Close this public hearing. Item 7.03 is a public hearing on Project 1002, Euclid Avenue, Guthrie Street to Ditch. It's a local project by street reconstruction. This project has an estimated cost of $420,190.50 with an amount to be assessed of $126,057, Your Honor. Thank you. I'll open this public hearing. If anyone would like to address the council, so... Please come to the podium, state your first and last name and address, please. My name is Kevin Ross. I live in Detroit Lakes, but I have uh, residential property for sale in the uh, Carmen View area at uh, on uh, Euclid Street and also uh, Guthrie and Fifth Avenue. And uh, first of all, I'd like to say thank you so much for Fifth Avenue. Uh, you really jump-started the sales. And uh, being a partner with Crookston on the uh, infrastructure, such as sewer and water in that area, I think it's important to follow through with the street project to, to get the, the deal done on sales. And so uh, I, I, I'm, I'm thankful that you're considering the uh, Euclid project in Guthrie, and uh, um, I am a little concerned about the sales when the assessment price goes up, but if I wear a city hat, I understand why it's going up. And uh, so that's the balance you gotta take, and maybe we're, we might be scaring some sales away with higher assessments. Um, so that I guess that's the give and take, but, and uh, I just, I want to echo uh, a neighbor that I talked to this evening, and that was um, her suggestion that uh, why, you know, why did it jump so much? And it's going to be hard, just like when Jake said, for a person that's already there in a residence to, to justify that. But, you know, these roads and and curbs don't last forever either, and sooner or later you're gonna have to pay it, it's just a matter of when. Um, so I understand both sides of that situation, but I, I, I ask for consideration for lowering that assessment price, but, but, uh, but I, I really do want it, the project to proceed forward. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Glenn Fegan, my nurse, 611 Euclid Avenue. I only have a question. I think the project, I'm for the project in Euclid Avenue. My uh, question would be uh, Euclid Avenue is where the car is now and where the gravel starts. 
there will be an incline of a foot. And my question would be, are you going to continue level with uh, Euclid Avenue uh, the tar, or <clears throat> if the if you lower to make it level, our driveway then will be out of whack, and who who stands to our our, our approach? Rich, please. That's all I have. I'll Thank you. Try to answer your question, Glenn. Um, we have taken that into account. Okay, and. We are trying to find that balance of so your driveways don't get too steep because you got some yards that are up higher, some yards that are down lower. So we're trying to make that street grade go up and down so we can tie in as best we can and make the driveways usable. Just raise the street up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's ultimately what we'll end up doing. So we're trying to match some driveways because there are some yards that are higher than others. Yeah. So the, the other residents are also higher than than uh, yes. So you know, I don't know if it's feasible for a city to have a raise in a street. It, it is, but we'll, we'll watch the grade so it doesn't get out of hand. I just want to be able, how long is this, how, how long, another question, how long would we be without a driveway? Uh, well, we'll try and keep access to you most times, but once we pour the curb and gutter, then you wouldn't be able to get into your driveway for about seven days. Got any good fruit? Yeah. <laughs> So there, there would be a little bit of a delay where you couldn't pull into. I think I put in sewer in, in, in line under the pavement or the street or do anything with the sewer. Well, we'll get some, we're going to have to get some storm sewer down yeah. the block. So yes, there'll be some storm sewer down. Yep. So be, we would be without more than seven days. Well, uh, <laughs> okay. No problems. But there, there will be times where you won't be able to get them. Yeah, but that's not the question. But yep. I just want to know how to, who's going to fix the street. We'll have a transition. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll close this public hearing. Item 7.04 is a public hearing on project number 1003, Guthrie Street, Euclid Avenue to Fifth Avenue South. It's a local project by street reconstruction. This project has an estimated cost of $235,452.45, with an amount to be assessed of $70,636, Your Honor. Thank you. I'll open this public hearing. Does anyone wish to add, address counsel? Please come to the podium. State your first and last name and address, please. Hearing none, I'll close this public hearing. Item 7.05 is a public hearing on project number 1004, Guthrie Street DAC bus garage approach to Fifth Avenue South. It's a local project by street reconstruction. This project has an estimated cost of $153,595.25, with an amount to be assessed of $46,079, Your Honor. Thank you. I'll open this public hearing. Anyone wish to address council, please come to the podium. State your first and last name and address, please. Hearing none, I'll close this public hearing. Item 7.06 is a public hearing on a portion of alley off Elm Street between Central Avenue and Summit Avenue. It's a, lo a local project and only be blacktop applied. This project has an estimated cost of $38,759, Your Honor. Thank you. I'll open this public hearing. Does anyone wish to address council? Please come to the podium. State your first and last and name and address, please. Hearing none, I'll close this public hearing. Okay. Thank you. Moving on. Regular. Yes. Regular agenda. Yes, Your Honor. Item 8.01 is a resolution to approve the purchase of the X Ripper grinder for the Public Works, de Public Works Department. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve this resolution? I'll make Over. that. I'll second. Okay. Christy and Tim. Thank you. Discussion? Okay. Yes, Your Honor. I mean, I want, I'd like to hear Brandon talk about it a little bit. And with it kept in mind that, you know, this is, it's, it's because of the 
debris and leaves are going into the sewer system, correct? Mm -hmm. so Would you say exactly. that some of that no. has to come from the, the, the jail directions. as well? Yeah, so this is this is <clears throat> gonna be on the Polk County uh, the jail across from Am Pride there. Um, so the inmates are flushing anything you can imagine that you wouldn't think would go down the toilet. And I think you experience backups oh, yeah. at Am Pride because of it. So um, we're, and you'll, there's going to be a public hearing to, for the utility rates to uh, add a grinder rate to their bill to be compensated for the grinder. Um, and it's a pretty, it's a similar, either, either the cities adopt a rate structure like this, or they uh, get into a mutual agreement where the facility installs it and then the city maintains it. I like this better because yes, we have the upfront cost of the grinder, but um, as it needs maintenance in the future and uh, it'll help reimburse us for the electricity because that grinder runs 24 hours a day. So I, I basically when an inmate uh, flushes a jumpsuit or a bed sheet, it grinds it up small enough so that the uh, it doesn't plug the main anymore. So um, there's there's been there's been and it's not just you know there's ramen noodle uh the wrappers everything that you can imagine they flush down the toilet so and just for your information councilman <clears throat> i've had discussions with andy larson who is involved in this and they understand that it would be an upfront cost for the city and that we would then impose a new fee a monthly fee on them into perpetuity for our purchase reimburse us and for ongoing maintenance electricity that type of thing uh, they're, they're well aware of this. What I was going to get at is I kind of know what the problem is and, and put it up with it for 15 years over there, you know, with or whatever long. Um, it closes you down. It blocks up your car wash. It plugs all the way to Crookston Welding and all the way back, and it is. I mean, but I was, my point was going to be is that are they going to be having some skin in the game on this? or do we Yes, get it, get and that back? will so, be dealt with so in so the that's next yeah. resolution. Thank you. Thanks, Brandon. Further discussion? Roll call, please. Menard? Aye. Melby? Aye. Jurdy? Aye. Fisher? Aye. Briggs? Aye. Cavalier? Aye. Kressel? Aye. Clatt? Aye. Okay. <coughs> Motion carries. Item 8.02 is a resolution calling for a public hearing about changes in the Crookston Water Department fee schedule. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve this resolution? I'll Come make that Honor. motion. I'll go with uh, Delane and Chris. I'll second it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> discussion, Corky. Yes, this is a resolution calling for a public hearing to discuss our fee schedule uh, with respect to item number one and discuss what that amount should be actually per month. Thank you. Can, can I just ask a question? So whatever the fee is that we're going to be charging, it, that it takes into account for the lifespan of the grinder plus the maintenance and electricity? Yeah, it's, you know, I, I was, I estimated when I put this together that it was going to be about $400 a month. So I was thinking about structuring it as, you know, the service coming to the grinder is eight inch. So uh, smaller grinders, if we have to put one in in the future, will be a little bit cheaper. But if we charged $50 per inch of service line size, it should it should uh, price out right. So if, let's just say that we get a nursing home that we have. You know, there's there's a state statute now that requires when jails are built that they have to put these grinders in. Sure, so, reason, sure. um, but we just missed that. But sure. anyway, so I that's where I was going to try and land is fifty dollars uh, per inch. So uh, their monthly fee will be about four hundred dollars. And what's generally the lifespan of a grinder? Uh, Ten to fifteen years. Okay. And with. Uh, if we impose the fee, that will be applicable to any in the future, so we won't have to come back per sure. time. It will be applicable to any that would go in. <coughs> Thank you. Further discussion? Hearing none, can I roll call, please? Menard? Aye. Melby? Aye. 
Jurdy? Aye. Fisher? Aye. Briggs? Aye. Cavalier? Aye. Kressel? Aye. Clatt? Aye. Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Item 8.03 is a resolution to approve the 2023 Crookston Housing Study. So moved, Your Honor. Second. I'll second that. Second. <laughs> motion by Quick around here. here. Yeah. So you guys are really active yeah. tonight. <laughs> okay. Moving around. All right, discussion. We have had an update to the Crookston Housing Study uh, just completed in March. Uh, any of you who want to look at it, there's a copy here at City Hall. You can get a copy from us. Uh, it's done for a number of reasons. One, it helps us with planning, uh, what direction you all want to take with respect to housing, be it rental, multifamily, uh, whatever. Secondly, it helps us with the Economic Development Authority's ability to make applications uh, for various grants. They want current updated information. And three, it may very well help us in our conversations with Tri-Valley Housing about some other type of housing that they may wish to push uh, forward in conjunction with us and other funding sources. So uh, it's been read. Uh, our Economic Development Authority Director has read it. I have uh, read it. And um, it does what we need it to do to give us direction for various items. Further discussion? I just want to say I picked up uh, the housing study Thursday or Friday, and there's a lot of good information there, so I would encourage you guys to maybe get a copy and breeze through it. So that's what I got. Further discussion? Hearing none, can roll call, please. Menard? Aye. Melby? Aye. Jurdy? Aye. Fisher? Aye. Briggs? Aye. Cavalier? Aye. Kressel? Aye. Clatt? Aye. Okay, a motion carries. Item 8.04 is a resolution establishing the Municipal State Aid Street Extension of MSAS 138, Your Honor. Thank you. Motion, motion to approve this resolution. So moved. So I'll second it. Got Tim and Clayton. Discussion? Forky, yes, this is uh, an application for declare, declaration of a state aid road. Uh, if it's declared, we can get additional funding sources at various times. Just so you all know where it is, as you're proceeding south out of town, you get to the turn to go to the transfer station, uh, Ziegler's, John Deere, that two-block area, three-tenths of a mile. Uh, we're asking it to be declared state aid. Thank you. <coughs> for Perky, just for clarification, really what this means is by declaring this for state aid, it provides a larger dollar amount for us in the long run? Yes, it does. Okay. Further discussion? Hearing none, can I have roll call, please? Menard? Aye. Melby? Aye. Jurdy? Aye. Fisher? Aye. Briggs? Aye. Cavalier? Aye. Kressel? Aye. Clatt? Aye. Okay, motion carries. Item 8.05 is a resolution approving the plans and specifications and calling for bids on the 2023 street improvements, Your Honor. Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve this resolution? I'll make that motion, Your Honor. Thank you. Don, is there a second? I'll second. Second by Henry. Thank you. Discussion? Borky? Yes, this is what uh, the people were here for the public hearing tonight. We want to uh, have you adopt the specifications, one, uh, an engineer's report, and two, uh, authorizing and calling for publication so we can get actual bids for these projects so we know what they would cost and when they're here and uh, we'll have another hearing allowing people to see that and for you to have all the information you need regarding what projects, how much, and the assessment rate. Thank you. Further discussion? I, I have a question. So um, if we adopt the resolution today, is there any um, opportunity for changing of any of those initial specifications? And I only ask based on what Robert shared about um, like the sidewalk um, and then the um, making the, the curbs, the ADA with um, the, the curbing, the mountable curbing. Is there any consideration for those type of, of design changes after this point? Rich, can you address that? I can discuss with Brendan. We kind of discussed this together and came up with what we have proposed. So 
we can certainly discuss the changes. I think the question is, is it possible to make changes in the future if we adopt these plans and specifications? Um, yes, we could. We, we could make, well, yes, we could. We could work with the contractor if, if some of these minor changes. It uh, might be an alternate. A change of, of curb type could be done with the contractor. We could work out. A change them. order on that nature. Yes, exactly. Okay. What about the sidewalk? Sidewalk, uh, I guess. You know, whether adding sidewalk usually isn't a problem or deleting sidewalk usually isn't a problem. Um, but, you know, sometimes contractors bid their unit price based on so much sidewalk. And if we come back and say, well, no, we're only going to do half that amount, they might say, well, I need to adjust my unit price. So that, that's a risk there. If you change your unit, if you change the, the quantity, to such a degree, they may request, and they have the right to request, either an increase or a decrease in, in their pricing. Usually it's not ever a decrease, it's always an increase, but. So question here, um, Robert <coughs> also mentioned going from what, 32 feet to 28 feet? I would not recommend that. I guess. 28 feet is just too narrow. You get snow banks, a car parks in the street, that snow plow's not getting by. 32 would be a minimum. Robert, That's my can, recommendation. Robert, can you come to the podium, yeah. please? Yeah. I get it. He doesn't want to change his plans, and I wouldn't want to either. But I would suggest uh, uh, add deduct uh, to this to the plans, and that would be what would be your price to um, not remove the sidewalk, or you know add deduct, you know change that type of gutter to this, or change it to 28 feet to see if there is a difference on, on your plans without you having to redo them. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> would, would that be an alternative, Rich? How would that be dealt with? Um, yeah, we could we could do it as an alternate alternate. Um, just you know, putting a different style curb in and see what the pricing comes in per foot on that. Yep. But, and on the road, twenty eight feet. What's wrong with that? I mean, what, why can't you go there? Well, I'll let. I've seen I've seen that before. Mm -hmm. Brandon and I'll let maintenance from a maintenance standpoint, snow removal, emergency vehicles. That's just too high. Yeah, so, you know, it's in, in the summer, even in the summertime, if you get cars parked on both sides of the road, and if you, if, if it's a, if everybody per, parks with their tires touching the curb on both sides, which isn't real realistic, if you, if you, if you go around town and, and you really look at where people park, they're, they're most, of the, most likely going to be about a foot off the curb. So then you, you, you got, you know, we'll just say 11 feet. So then it gets really narrow. Our plows are, are 12 feet wide. So, um, it, you know, could, if we wanted to limit parking, um, could we go to 28 feet? Um, and, and then, you know, when you get, the, if, you, if you look around town right now on a, on a snow, event like this winter you know most of the it gets to the point where every time you plow the the road gets narrower and narrower the 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 roads down in the woods edition are already most of them are 30 feet so i mean uh it's i i just don't feel like it would be you know responsible to narrow them that much just I understand it'll decrease the the cost of of the project, but you know that's kind of why we went with sidewalk on one side of the street. You know, the if you if we do both sides, it it and and take it out and start from scratch. It, it was about another sixty or seventy thousand dollars to the project to have sidewalk on both sides of the street. So I guess my goal in the future was to have a sidewalk on one side of the street um, on especially on in busier areas which i would think in the woods edition you know your houston avenue going from holly to south ash i would call that a pretty high traffic area and then probably down holly and and south ash some of the low traffic uh you know, if you if you go look at the the new streets on the northeast corner of Crookston, there isn't hardly a sidewalk in the whole northeast corner, and and I think it's because 
sidewalks are so costly. So, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to, you know, make, make it safe for everybody, but be as economical as possible too. So, go ahead. Can I follow that up? Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right, so I had to crunch some numbers and I was looking at this 900 linear feet of a six foot long concrete sidewalk that you have to take out has a demolition cost to it. Um, what I figured out was approximately $6 a linear foot. Now, if that's right or wrong, I, I think it's, it's, it's close, but it's $6 a linear foot to take out that concrete and then to resod it and re restore those driveways, it's gonna cost you a cl a close to $32,000. The idea that you can remove sidewalk and it doesn't cost you anything, or, or to fix that doesn't cost you anything, uh, you'll find it, it's costing you more on this project. To leave the sidewalk there as it is, it's gonna cost less. Um, a new sidewalk at $12 a square foot, six inch thick, 900 liter f linear feet was $64,800 at $12 a square foot to put in sidewalk. Yes, it is expensive, but the idea that you would take out sidewalk from an existing historic neighborhood it doesn't make sense to me. In a new residential <coughs> neighborhood, they don't have sidewalks. Um, you know, and the width of 28 feet, this came from Municipal Engineers uh, report study by Prior Lake City in Minnesota, and it has a survey. And you can fit uh, a fire truck and two cars you know, next to each other on the roadway at 28 feet. Now, is four feet a big difference on, on your infrastructure for a road? I think it is. Is it worth fighting for that and keeping your sidewalks? It is. Um, could you look at this plan and, and change these? and get, get these in there, and would that help with our cost if we did that beforehand, rather than just submitting the plans as they are, because, you know, giving us this hearing and then saying we're gonna just submit our plans anyways as they are, and we're not gonna take any of your considerations, we're just gonna get some bids that, you know, what our plans say. So why, why have this hearing if you're not gonna take into consideration, you know, recommendations to the plans? That's my perspective on it, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion? Hearing so, I, yes, so for clarification here, is it to our benefit to table this to the next meeting and have a review of the designs to see if there's something that could be more rich? Rich, what does that have it's impact about, on the timetable? Well, I'll push the back. Yeah. So then the bid opening and back I mean, would that affect like scheduling a contractor would they get booked up even faster that well I'm sure we'd have people bidding on it but yes when you know some contractors will start filling up their schedules and you know maybe instead of having three or four bids maybe you have two so it it could have some impact but yeah I mean delaying it can be done, but it's, it is pushing it back. It's but I, I agree with Robert there that if you're, if you're gonna ask for information and then disregard it, are we asking for your you know, permission or approval or are we asking for your put, input, you know? It's, you're living there. That's your guys' properties. I mean, it's part of the city, but you guys are the ones that are gonna be dealing with or without sidewalks or narrow streets and whatnot. So I would, I would uh, go along just to, Take that extra two weeks and review the options. Well, the, the, there's a motion and a second, mm -hmm. right? And then, and you can vote it up or down. Uh, you can have a motion to table till next time. Uh, they then the seconder and the motioner would have to withdraw that uh, and table it. I guess I'd like to make a comment regarding the width of the street. I know on the street I live on, this was years ago, it was <coughs> quite wide street. I had no curb and gutter and I wanted it, but they narrowed the width of the street. So now, you know, the vehicles are bigger, they're wider, and if, if there's vehicles parked on both sides of the street, there's only, and you're meeting another vehicle, there's only room for one vehicle at a, get past those vehicles before the other one can enter. So, it's also just, uh, I drive the wood edition five days a week with a school bus. I'm using uh, Hunter to come out of there off uh, Spanley or one of those streets. 
in order to clear that, and it's worse in the winter, to get around without hitting a snowbank on a corner or whatever. It takes up the whole two lanes, and as Dale said, if I got an oncoming car, we got to decide on who's going to go, and when you're halfway in, it, uh, it's going to make a turning difference, that narrowing. Like I said, it's been four years that I've driven <clears throat> school bus, and the Woods Edition is an area that we have problems getting around, especially with parked vehicles and stuff like that, so I wouldn't be in favor of narrowing it. It's tough to get in there, and some of these corners, we have students standing, waiting for us to make the turn to come down. Brandon, how wide is, is Pleasant? I would have to look. Um, In your rough estimate, it's it's wider than a 28 foot. Yes. And when I came, I came on Pleasant, and there was two cars there parked across from each other. And I tell you what, I don't think you would have got a buster. I know you wouldn't have got a fire truck at any good speed. Um, I just I just kind of have a tough time shrinking down a road. If you can keep it wider, that's uh, that's possibly better. And you run into it, as you said, you get two vehicles parked alongside. Uh, Fenley is one that several times during the winter, yeah. I've gone three quarters way down and have to back back out to get through. Yeah. Well, if it's calendar yeah. parking or different type of parking, then maybe. But yeah. Pleasant is 32 feet. Central is about 32. So that's not right. no. and I mean, and with, the, and with the snow, it's just... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is 36. Okay. Chris, can you come to the? Yep. Thank you. <laughs> but just driving central every day, there isn't enough room on that road, and that's one of the widest ones in town. Correct. It's. I mean, when I'm, especially when you have school buses coming through, it's not close to wide enough. And I drive it every single day, multiple times. So it's and in the winter you have all the the snow banks, and uh, yeah, you have the cars. Now you have them parked three feet off the curb because of the snow banks, especially this year. So if you're going to do it, just do it right. Yeah. That's what I say. We, we've been doing, we've been cheaping out for years, and we need to start doing things the right way here. Yes. Yep. Go ahead, Robert. All right. I think we're kind of missing the point. I'm, I want to see this project, but I want to minimize the infrastructure costs. So going from 32 to 28, I'm trying to minimize costs. I'm trying to get the sidewalks to stay there so we don't have to pull them out and spend more money. You know, I'm trying to make a balance here. It's not that I don't think 32 feet's good. I'm, I'm thinking I'm looking at costs, you know, as, as a homeowner. I'm just trying to minimize things, you know. Can we get by with 28 feet? We sure could. Um, is it not as easy for the bus driver? It's not. But... 28 feet is possible. I want to save the, the, the existing sidewalks, you know, that infrastructure that goes in there. If the road's a little bit narrower, it may be easier to do, you know. Um, I th that's my point. It's just, um, yep. you know, I, ideally, yeah, wide street's great, but it's expensive. And if we can save our sidewalks and get a narrow street, then I'm all for that, you know, traffic calming um, and any other benefits. Same with the trees that are in the right away too you know there, there's things that make the neighborhood nice and i want to look at this and say it's an improvement it's not uh, taking out sidewalks and then saying it's an improvement in your neighborhood so I, I am passionate about it and i get the you know people want wide streets but uh, when i look at this in the winter time and that section of the roadway it's houston and holly it's a big curve and and people would just rather not drive around that curve they'd rather you know go somewhere else you know so that's all i have thanks thank you so, Rich, we can get an alternate bid on this, leaving the sidewalks in and 28 foot width of a road, or? What, and making it a 28 foot wide, that would be more difficult to make that an alternate. We'd have to have all different quantities set up for it. Okay, but we can leave the sidewalks. Sidewalks, we can do an alternate. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? So just for clarification, if we do go ahead and pass this, this goes to um, us bidding out and then getting specs and then another public hearing, correct? Yes. Yep. Okay. 
But if we, if we knock it down, we can change that prior to, or we could go back and vote on the other projects other than Houston, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And then we could move forward with those other ones. You mean at the next hearing? All right, tonight. If you if we turn this down, can you not just go right back and just propose the street improvements other than 701? And then you could move forward with the bidding on the other projects that that you don't have proposed changes going to. I think you can do. Well, Instead of like all is one, is that what you would do, Rick? Right? You would do it that all it is one big project then? Yes, that's the way I would prefer to do it with Houston in, in included. Because if we move forward with just all the other projects, what do we do with Houston? We bid that out as a separate project okay, later? Is it cheaper to do it all in one? Yes. You figure? Yeah, okay, but yeah you, can, you can parse them out as a legal matter. You can. As a practical matter, that's your decision. I, I get that it might cost you more that way, but at the same time, there was a conversation, and I wasn't here for the last council meeting. I'm sorry about that, but uh, the time before, there was a talk about, and somebody brought it up here, about the uh, um, going out and trying to get the whole Woods Edition product project together and bond for it. Well, if you bond for it, it's my understanding it's still 30%. Yeah. Right, and it, well, it doesn't change that, but then you'd have mm -hmm. you could do it in with Hunter being included in there. Just to answer, Hunter, to answer your question, Alderman, it is not. I, we did some more research. It's twenty percent minimum. Okay, mm -hmm. to qualify for bonds. That's more right. like it. Twenty percent. Yes. 20%. Um, can you can you parse it out from a legal matter? Absolutely, you can do that. Um, whether you want to or not. But if we par if we parse it out, then it's going to come in, and if it comes in more expensive, then that's going to increase the assessment. Yeah. Overall cost, that's okay. correct. We're trying to save money on one hand by not putting it on there, but if it's not all in one package, which you said it would be more expensive for that project. I now mean... I, now I, you have to add that into the mix. Of, where is the savings? That's going to eat up some of that savings. All right, doing. Joe, then we can go back. If you poo-poo this, you can do it all together different. Or together so the next other time than in the two sidewalk weeks, issue, is we there anybody here that would just, is interested in going to a 28 foot wide street? Because I'm not. I'm not either. No, I'm not interested in knocking the size of the street. But as far as the sidewalk and that type of thing, yeah, keeping sidewalk on both sides. I've been a sidewalk advocate forever, and you got it there and you tear it out. To me, that makes absolutely no sense at all, especially that big parcel that you got there. I mean, for kids. Hey, that's where we learned how to uh, I mean, I skateboard, can, I can, you mean, you know? I can get on board with, you know, saving the sidewalks if that could save money. I mean, I can I can get myself there, but I, I, I can't get myself to go into a narrower street down no. there. Yeah, I would agree. I, I think at this point I would say if we could get Rich to do the alternate with the sidewalks, that, that would be a good place for us to, to land. But I agree, having driven down there, our daycare was down there, I've heard the horror stories of buses trying to get through there. I think just from a safety perspective, it needs to be wider. And Rich, would that be a change order then, or would that would be an alternate? That's what we need to clarify. It would, it would be, an, I'd, I'd put it as an alternate in the plan. Okay. We'd have one quantity putting sidewalk on both sides, and then we'd say, give us a price for sidewalk on one side okay. for a smaller quantity. And, see what and that, that would be consistent with the present resolution? Yes. Okay. It's just an alternate. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. I agree with Delaney. As far as myself, I'm not. I don't have an issue with the sidewalks on both sides. No. All right. Further discussion. Roll call, please. Well, just to clarify again, this is just the resolution approving the plans and specifications and calling for the bid for the 2023 street improvement. Okay. Menard. Aye. Melby. Aye. Jerdy. Aye. Fisher? Aye. Briggs? Aye. Cavalier? Aye. Kressel? Aye. Klatt? Aye. Okay, a motion carries. Good discussion. Good discussion. Okay. One more, I think. Yeah. yeah. Item 8.06 is a resolution accepting the bids um, with respect to the Duperon flex rate bar screen lift station for lift station for your honor. Thank you. 
Thank you. Do I have a motion to approve this resolution? So moved, Your Honor. I'll second it. Tim and Don, second. thank you. Discussion? Corky, a brief? Yep, this is a, a matter that needs to be addressed to make it more safe in the lift station. There's debris, uh, other matter, uh, and we need your approval to um, purchase this item. Uh, there was one bid that was sent, a uh, sealed bid in the amount that you see. Uh, it was the only bid, but this is the item that uh, Public Works uh, Director has recommended to help uh, address the problem in lift station four. Thank you. Further discussion? Is this the only one that's going to need it? <coughs> Are there plans for the other three, four? So you guys put one in lift station three, uh, Ashley, do you remember four years ago, probably? Yeah. Somewhere. Anyways, mm -hmm. so uh, lift station three takes all the wastewater from the north portion of town and then three pumps into four, but then everything else from the south end runs into three as well. So um, the, uh, the impellers that were put in a couple years ago, brand new, are wore out already because of all the debris that it's, it's, it's uh, pumping. So these rakes do a really good job. You know, your biggest battle out at the ponds is um, getting rid of the solids. So when the solids fill your ponds, you got less storage. So the more solids we can get out before, and, and a lot of the solids, you know, uh, the downside of that grinder at the jail is it's grinding up plastic and this and that. If you just let it go out to the lagoons, it's just going to sit there for a hundred years and not really break down. So Basically, that grinder and, and all the other debris that uh, residents are, are flushing down the toilets, like, you know, the biggest battle is flushable wipes. So these, uh, these rakes remove all that, and then it uh, should extend the impeller life to 15 years on, on that lift station. So. so basically, this will have our two main lift stations protected, and uh, they're pretty expensive, so I don't think you can justify them on the smaller lift stations, but our two main lift stations <coughs> will be protected now. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. Further discussion? And the so funding the, on this? I mean, how many, I'm sorry, how many people did we send it out to that, do we know, for a bid? I mean, when we call for bids, it is published in the paper and then oh. Uh, they, they, we, Ashley and I get a couple, there's firms that push it out to all the contractors. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know why, uh, nobody else, you know, it is, it, the Dupron rake is pretty specific, but, uh, it's what we already have in our other, uh, lift station and, and it works well. So I wanted to spec that specific rake too. So. Uh, Chris, do you have a question? Yeah, I was just going to say funding for this. The 602 reserves, the so wastewater reserves. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion? Hearing none, can I roll call, please? Menard? Aye. Melby? Aye. Jurdy? Aye. Fisher? Aye. Briggs? Aye. Cavalier? Aye. Kressel? Aye. Clatt? Aye. Okay, motion carries. All right. Reports, Corky. Busy two weeks. Uh, we've been meeting with the school district and with Stephanie, the All for Learning Child Care Center. We have good news. She will be open on Wednesday. A uh, number of conversations with her, with the state, um, and with the school district, and it's finally going to get opened on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. uh, we met with some, uh, I met with some residents of the Woods Edition discussing the sloughing off on uh, that area that was spoken about this evening, talked about various issues and the overall renovation of the woods and got a lot of history. Um, but we, we accomplished that uh, meeting and took their uh, comments into consideration. We had a team's meeting with uh, MnDOT. I was on Valley Talk and talked about the upcoming preparations uh, for perhaps a high water event uh, we've met with the school district about them potentially using our softball diamond one as their home field, and we've entered into a, an agreement 
uh, to provide dugouts and screening for them, and they will be sharing in the cost with that. Um, we've also um, talked about the uh, firefighters, the paid on call firefighters contract. We're starting in negotiations again with them. Uh, we've talked about the T-Hanger project at the airport commission, um, and we're moving forward with that. We opened bids for the bathhouse at the campground, and you'll be hearing more about that uh, later. We also had various meetings with all of you, or each of you talked about various issues. We had accountant interviews, and I think um, our uh, finance director, Ryan, can talk about that a bit more. Um, and then we had a meeting about a buyout uh, from, with FEMA on a house on Riverside, and I think that will be uh, forthcoming. We just have to start mm -hmm. negotiations. Um, and then we have department head meetings every Tuesday. Uh, and uh, discuss various issues. So it's been busy. Thank you, Corky. Brandon, you're close. You might as well. <laughs> uh, we've just been preparing for the snow to melt. So uh, Bertles was out and uh, put a trench down the middle of County Ditch 99 between Fisher Avenue and uh, I think it's the township count where Craig Larson's house is anyway. So um, I want to make, we want to make sure that that was open to, uh, to take the water when it does start going there. We're uh, testing all our, uh, our pumps for when we have to start shutting gates, making sure they're not frozen. Um, the, like Corky said, we met on a, a home uh, to be uh, possibly bought out on Riverside. Um, I wanted to just clarify on, on Houston Avenue and the, the eight houses, um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want there to be the perception that the, the homes are going to be removed on Houston Avenue. The, the project is we contact, I contacted the watershed this week and, and we're going to look at that, uh, that riverbank and and see what we can do to stabilize it without without removing any of the homes there um you know the likelihood of the homes having to go when when the when the core of engineers uh you know 10 15 years ago whatever it was uh found it not to be the case is probably pretty unlikely you know at the end of the day if if we can't get some funding, it it might have to be put on the homeowners to stabilize that bank. Um, but uh, the likelihood that those houses will have to go go is probably pretty unlikely. But um, in the meeting that we had with Ward Four, I just you know I probably said more than I should have that day. So I just wanted to clarify that. Um, you know, it's, I got a call from a homeowner on Houston and, and I, you know, I, I had to apologize to her cause she had to hear from the grapevine that her house was going to get tore down. So mm -hmm. I want it to be clear that, um, that's, that's not the plan as of right now. It's extremely unlikely that that'll happen, but, uh, we do need to try and get all the right parties engaged in the conversation to, uh, to try and stabilize that bank. So. Um, other than that, not much. Um, Zach Strumman and I purchased the golf course, so um, we've been I've been busy with that on uh, on our free time. So um, Zach will be leaving the city once uh, the course is up and running, and and I plan to stick around. So it's a new adventure, and uh, we'll be busy, but I looking forward to the challenges. So. Thanks, Brandon. Uh, Jake, anything? Um, registration is open. Um, so April 10th to May 19th is registration. Uh, May 20th to May 26th, there will be a $50 late fee. And then May 27th, we are closing our registration for summer programming. Uh, I'll give myself some time to um, fix anything that I have to, um, add, add people there, add a team here, whatever, whatever happens. But, um, so those are the dates that we are going to be open. Um, so it'll be a busy, 
busy next couple weeks or a few weeks ahead. So uh, preparing for summer and, and getting down that last stretch. Um, been working with Chief Hellstab and Scott Butt and my crew. We are going to start pre-sand, um, pre sand, pre bagging sandbags tomorrow. We're gonna hopefully more likely get a bag of sand dumped at our shop <coughs> and we're gonna just start preparing um, if we get a flood. So we'll have things ready. Um, so we've been making a plan with Chief and how we're gonna run things and, and what we're gonna do for, for the flood. Um, my guys have been out. Uh, they obviously were snow, uh, blowing snow last week, but uh, we also been out at the fields. Like Corky said, the softball team would like to use Diamond One at Highland excuse me, Rackland Complex. So between Karn and, and Rec 1, we've been out there just kind of blowing snow, getting things ready to help move faster, uh, melting-wise. Um, now we're going to be blowing in the mornings if we can um, because kind of in the afternoon it gets a little soft. We don't want to make any more problems. Um, so a little bit of the CSC update. I did get an email from Matt today from Wired Electric. I will email you that. I will forward you what he emailed me because it's like a timeline of um, where he's at, the future, and when they're going to be done and stuff. So I will email all the councils so you guys have that. If you have any questions, please email me back, and I can forward them on to Matt. Um, I think it would be easier that way. And then uh, the pool, we started tomorrow. We start um, four weeks of um, spring sw uh, swim lessons, so Tuesdays and Thursdays, and we roughly have... 60 kids um, at kind of different ages, but 60 kids um, for the spring session. So uh, just get ready, like I said, for summer and for flooding and just everything coming. So that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Chad. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, just wanted to report that we continue working with our managed service partner, Exigen, in getting our new network online. Our final pieces of equipment uh, finally arrived. They were quite delayed due to, uh, due to shipping issues, or excuse me, not shipping issues, but supply chain issues. Um, but we have them now. Um, and I'm also happy to report that tonight is the first night that we are live with our new, um, I'll call it Channel 3 rebroadcasting setup. Um, so it is a completely open source, repurposed uh, computer hardware, was at no cost to the city, and we have uh, much better broadcast for our Channel 3 viewers tonight. Mm -hmm. That's all I have, Your Honor. Chad, does that fix a lot of the... Uh sound issues that people were experiencing at home. Yes, and it also uh, greatly eliminates the, or not eliminates, but greatly reduces the delay uh, in, uh, in broadcast from live and, and going out on the channel. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ryan. Well, as Corky said, um, <clears throat> we've had several meetings, um, all sort to follow up with the airport. Um, we're looking at a grant to kind of help out with some of the crack ceiling that has to be done every year out there. So um, that's one thing we're looking at. And then also the HVAC system out there is another grant that we're looking at for helping out some of the dollars with the airport. Um, we did conduct interviews for the accounting position. Um, did extend an offer to someone um, having a few issues with trying to come upon a start date. Some issues have arisen today. I got an email on, so we'll work those out. Um, we did close out our fiscal year, um, so started working with Miller McDonald on that and handing them off all the 2001 reports that were sent to Brady Mart, so they now have all those copies also. Um, and then just starting to reconcile some of the other accounts also going forward. But, would encourage um, any council member if you have questions with anything that's been presented to you tonight or have questions just please feel free to call me or set up a time that we corky you and i can meet or whatever we'll be able to help you thanks ryan jane Just a couple of things for tonight. Um, one update, uh, Thursday, we're gonna potentially, as long as the weather and everything holds, we're actually gonna run hiring for the full-time firefighter position. I'll be meeting with Jordan tomorrow, Dutch base, make sure everything's kind of cleared away, everything's lined up. He was out today, but we'll try and 
get all that lined up and then hopefully Thursday we can run all the testing and interviews. So we'll be doing some of that down here, some of it at the station. Um, hopefully by Thursday we can make a decision and just start the discussions after that. Um, the fire department trained on Thursday and the CERT members and council will be training on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, um, down at the fire station. And that had to deal with the sandbagging issues, uh, some sandbagging techniques. And we'll do the same thing on Wednesday for the certain council. And once we're done with the sandbag and stuff, we are going to, um, the firefighters right now are getting the ward command posts up and running. So that way we can get everybody into the three command posts that we would be utilizing in high water. And we're going to get those up, get everybody kind of in, familiarized with them. If we need to activate them, then we're going to at least be a little bit ahead of the game on that. Uh, planning and preparing is still underway. Uh, looking at the forecast, it looks somewhat favorable right now. Um, spent a lot of time with Brandon and Jake and uh, Blake Carlson at the same time, reviewing a lot of the stuff with, you know, with the snowpack and everything that's out there, um, the way the snow is sitting. Um, hopefully the temps will stick. Right now you're going to see a lot of melting. Um, we'll see watching the river just basing our decisions off of that. But there's been a lot of planning and stuff in place. Uh, I'm still making phone calls today and just making sure we've got everything. Like Jake said, we are gonna try and start doing some sandbags tomorrow, but that's just, it's staging them. We're not gonna be placing them anywhere. They did go out today and they were uh, clearing off some snow off of some of the levees that would potentially be places where we would sandbag. Getting those opened up hopefully with the next couple of days with the weather that we're having. Dry off. Like, see if the rain hits or not, but uh, we're gonna get those open up, get them exposed, let some stuff melt, and so we can gain some access to that. Um, as you guys have probably noticed, and I think I sent the email, uh, USGS, I uh, was in contact with them um, in regards to the phone line that we always used to be able to call to be able to get a reading. With the data and the way everything is sent these days, um, the way that that compiled the information, it would essentially just overload their system with forecasting and just taking in all that information. So when I made the phone call, right now it runs on a 15 minute interval. It doesn't update that website all that fast, but it still sends the information. When it now gets to 11 feet, it's gonna kick over and it's gonna start updating every five minutes. The one difference between <coughs> that and like the national or the weather website that we usually use um, with the forecast, that one would have an auto refresh on it. This one on USGS will not. So. <coughs> It's going to tabulate that data every five minutes. We're just going to have to click and we're going to have to refresh it. But after it gets past 11 feet, every five minutes, it's going to send us an updated reading. So just to give us a better scope, um, we're still going to use both of them in conjunction. Just going to help the forecast depending on how high this weather or how high the river gets. We had, uh, I got an email here um, just before coming to council and a little blurb came out from the weather service. It was nothing mind blowing. Um, pretty much status quo is the way we are. They're excited about the weather forecast. Biggest thing that we're still looking for is we're still looking for some of these ditches and everything else to kind of open up and start feeding into the tributary. So once that happens, they will start issuing their forecasts. But for right now, um, a lot of talk about everything is kind of soaking in right now. We're just gonna play it by ear and see what happens on that end. So um, still looking to see if there's any service clubs that are interested in helping with the park department in getting some of these sandbags lined up. Got phone calls into sentence to serve to see if they would have that as an option. But right now that's kind of where we're sitting. Shane, if, if we come across people who are interested in helping out, like who should we direct those phone calls to? You can send them right to the fire station and I'll make sure I get back to them. Okay. But the process is not the process, but when they are needed. So I don't know if something can be put on the website or something that you know, nothing we need at this point or I can definitely go and I can reach out and talk to our social media contacts and our website contacts and we can get something out. I think having something on Facebook um, and the website would be really helpful because I know that there's, there's a lot of times I see questions or concerns or what have you. And for us to be able to like forward on or share on the information, I think is a lot easier way. Um, I also want to just say thank you for providing the talking points so far that you have um, in case we do have people call knowing what you guys are doing out there. So um, I appreciate that. 
My um, other point of clar clarification is with the CERT training tomorrow, will we also be going down to the wards to just check and see that all of our materials are good to go for next for Yeah, we'll, we'll practice there. We'll show the CERT members and council the proper sandbagging techniques. So we're talking about poly and then the placements of sandbags. And then once we get everybody get a handle on that, yes, yeah, so we're going to break up. So wards one and two will go to Old Court. Three and four will go down, and that'll be at Trinity again. And then five and six will actually go to the Polk County Museum, and that's all cleared off. There's snow, and the sun helped. And so we're going to, those are the three spots that we are going to focus on sure. and getting everything kind of set up. And Just so everybody knows what they're walking. training on Wednesday? Six to nine. Six to nine. Six to nine. Yep. Yeah. And that's Wednesday, not tomorrow. Yes. Yep. yep, Wednesday. Sorry if I misspoke earlier. Thank you. That's all I got. Thanks. Thanks, Shane. Darren. No report tonight, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Uh, Carrie asked me to let you all know that uh, the EDA is putting in the grant on behalf of the AIC Road, uh, requesting $460,000. Uh, and hopefully we get that. Um, so she's been working on that. Uh, pretty readily. Thank you, Corgi. So, with Tim tonight, anything? <clears throat> yes, um, well, I, I too want to echo uh, the gratitude to Shane um, for keeping us in the loop uh, with information with regard to a potential high water event. Um, also, thank you, Corky and Ryan, for taking time uh, today to uh, give me a briefing on the budget. I uh, really appreciate understanding how uh, all those uh, uh, complicated <laughs> numbers come together. Um, I am uh, a member of the <coughs> Housing Committee. Um, Don is joining me with that. And we have, um, we have separated housing from economic development. And the housing that we're talking about here is the supportive housing project basically at Oak Court. So we're looking at um, addressing some issues uh, with regards to uh, um, um, some enrichment activities for the individuals that are uh, living at Oak Court and um, uh, looking at opportunities to bring in mental health services, social work services uh, to uh, uh, assist uh, the individuals that need the support that are living in it. So we are uh, having our first meeting um, this coming Wednesday at 9.30 in the morning. So anybody else that would like to join us in that effort, uh, you're welcome to join us. It's going to be at Oak Court. They have a, a meeting space there um, and uh, we'd love to see you there. That's it. Thank you. Blaine? I just want to thank the people that came in and made themselves heard tonight for the for the different street improvements that we have. It's important that the community come out and um, tell us their opinion. So I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Joe? No report, Your Honor. Thank you. Don? No report, Your Honor. Blake? No report, Your Honor. Henry? I just want to say I'm looking forward to doing the CERT training with Shane. And <laughs> Good job for Shane, Jake, and Brandon getting everything ready just well ahead of time in case anything does happen. And congrats to Brandon and Zach on the golf course. I can't wait to see what's happening out there. All right, thank you. Christy. Um, I met with Shane on Friday and we went over um, a Google form to better track uh, volunteers in the future. Um, so hopefully we'll have that up and running, and then once we have that solidified, I'll create a QR code to help us um, disperse uh, that check-in and check-out form. So hopefully they'll help us in the long run as far as FEMA or none of those other um, groups are concerned, but I think this will hopefully make that process a lot smoother and a lot more accessible as um, everyone is running around doing what they need to do. Thank you. Wayne? Just a suggestion, Brandon, the golf hole should be this big, not that big. <laughs> <laughs> if you can make it happen. Um, as I said, I was missing last week, and I was out east with my grandchildren and watching the softball. And we went to a tournament, and I mean, it was like, wow. 
you know, 32 teams, three days, people all over, um, busy in town, busy, it's just busy, busy. And so, I mean, you're talking about, you know, partnering up with the school back there and doing, you know, Diamond One. I, I think the future is in trying to have tournaments for the younger kids because they all show up and they bring the whole family. And it's just like the hockey program, you know, if, if you have that, they make them come. I mean, we played at eight in the morning, got us done at quarter to 10 at night with three games and then came back for an eight o'clock game the next day. I mean, they're brutal out there. They don't have that 12 hour stretch or nothing, but uh, it, it's very well organized and, and it just shows that I think that around here, you know, if you started smaller, I used to run tournaments and that's kind of run its course as far as men's softball and that. They've made it so it's not easy for guys to play anymore when you get a little older. But I think that, that the younger ones, that's maybe what to look at. And we've got the facility. Uh, I think we should try to expand there. And by the way, I brought some of this weather back with me, so you're welcome. <laughs> That's all. All right, thanks, Wayne. Uh, just a couple things. Uh, hope everybody can attend the CERT training on Wednesday night at 6. Uh, Phil Huck from uh, Friends of the Library, there's a few uh, members that have run the course as far as how many years they can serve. So if you know of anybody that would like to serve on the Friends of uh, the Library, just get a hold of the staff down there or you can get a hold of Phil Huck. And then with Brandon, this transfer of liquor license, where does the goat ranch come into play? So Zach Stroman's dad uh, golfed on Manaqua for years. And he thought that uh, Lee Leach uh, mowed the rough too long. So when he would hit a bad shot out of the rough, he would say, dang, goat ranch. <laughs> <laughs> good to know. It's Zach's dad passed away a few years ago, so it was a good way to honor Dave. So Nice. Good to know. Thank you. I saw that. Was <laughs> <laughs> All right. We do not have a ways and means tonight, so nothing to come before council. We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight.